we are here today because we are going to sew a Tilda cat together. Here she is here. She's a cute little doll. She's got herself a little satchel, which is very cute. She's got little movable arms and legs. Also cute. So yes, we're going to sew this together today. So the first thing I want you to do is print out the pattern. I've printed it out, but I haven't printed out the cover page because there was no need to print out the cover page. It would have been just too much um, ink used. So let's have a look at the pattern together. So we are going to need to have three fabrics for this. So the first fabric you're going to need is for the cat itself. And I have got the called for Tilda doll fabric here in stone. It is the same one that I've made my other cat out of. Um, Tilda doll fabric is a nice fabric with a good weave. It's nice tight weave, which is all you really need to look for when you're looking for fabrics for your doll. It's just something with a tight weave. So you could just use a homespun as well. This is just a homespun from Spotlight, very cheap. Um, and yeah, everyone would probably have something close in their stash and you might not even want a gray cat. You might want a ginger cat or a black cat or a white cat. So you just need your cat body fabric in whatever color fabric you want to use. Um, just make sure that the weave of it isn't loose because we are going to do a very small stitch and um, you don't want to have too loose a weave. The other things you're going to need uh, a fabric for the dress and I'm going to use this one. This is also a Tilda fabric from an older line, which I can't even remember which line it was. And I don't think there's a salvage. Nope. But this is an older Tilda fabric that I'm going to use for the dress. And this one is going to have a green floral bag. And I've just got some pink floss here for the nose when we put the nose on. So that's a few things that we're going to need. Before we get started, we are going to skip through the pattern until we get to our pattern pieces, which are here. Okay. So what you're going to do next is you're going to prepare your pattern pieces and you're going to cut everything out. Um, and when you're cutting, just cut on the outside of the, the black line, just the very, very outside of it. Um, on all the pattern pieces and yeah let's do that now okay I've got all of the pattern pieces out I'm now just going to put aside the ones we need for the cat so let's see the dress one can go aside the bag one and the sleeve one can all go to the side we don't need those yet these are the ones that we do need. Now, we do need to assemble this part. So we are actually going to join where it says A and B on the pattern line. What well, did before we cut it out. I'm just gonna tape this together because that is a whole pattern piece. Okay, so we've got that taped together. Okay, so once we've got our fabric, we're gonna have it so it's right sides together, folded over, so one on top of the other. We are gonna get our pattern pieces, place them on top, and we're actually going to trace around each piece, doing all the marking. Now you can either use a pencil, a pen, any sort of marking tool you want. This is going to be your sewing line, so you want to be able to see it. So I'll just try with a pencil. Yep, that's good enough for me. So you're just going to trace around each pattern. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now I just want to draw your attention to the bottom of this piece here. So we have got some dotted lines on the inside here and then when we go across the bottom here just be sure to mark this little section here on the sewing line because you're going to be sewing just this part here and these parts here you'll just be cutting out. So just have a look on your pattern piece and you'll see that there's just like a little bit of a line here. Just make sure that you mark that little line. It'll be important later on. And when you get to your legs and your arms, just remember you're gonna to need to do two. So it says four, but we've got our fabric doubled over. So we just need to trace around it twice and that's gonna give us our two legs. Trace around our arms twice for two arms and trace around our ears twice for two ears. Okay, so now that we've traced around all of our pieces, this part is actually pretty easy. We are just going to take this over as it is, fold it over, and we are going to sew directly on these lines. So for the arms and legs, you are just going to sew directly around each of them so that they're completely closed. We'll open them up later. For the ears, you're going to do a little bit of a back stitch at the start and finish, and you're going to sew all the way up and down you're going to keep the bottom bit open because that's how we're going to get the stuffing in for that one so all the way up and down all the way up and down and for our cat all you're going to do at the moment is concentrate on the curved lines so this line here you will be sewing along all the way around the nose up to the point you're going to stop here so do a bit of a back stitch Starting again here, do a bit of a back stitch all the way down the other side of the cat. Back stitch again. These bits here you're not going to sew, but this little section on either side, it's a very, very tiny section each side, but you're going to do a little bit of sewing on either side of there. It will all make sense, I promise, but that's what you're going to do now. My suggestion is to drop your stitch length down really small like i'm talking 1.2 1.5 really tight stitches because when we stuff these dolls we're going to stuff them really firmly we want these stitches to be very tight and close together that's what we're going to do now let's do that and we'll come back for the next step So now that we've sewn around all of the pieces, we are going to cut everything out with a quarter inch seam allowance. So just with a pair of scissors and you can just eyeball it. You want a quarter of inch of extra fabric on the outside as you cut them all out. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces here. Now we need to Get this looking a bit more like a cat. All right, we're gonna start off with doing the arms and legs. So let's move our ears and our cat body aside. Okay, so after you've cut around a quarter inch, you're gonna to wanna to get a very sharp pair of scissors. So I'm using these little thread snips and you're just going to snip into the curves because it's just gonna give you a nicer curve when you turn them around don't cut your stitches that would be a disaster then you'd have to cut another piece and sew it but just give the curves a bit of a clip so that they're nice and close and do that with all of the curves on all of your pattern pieces 
Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to find the narrowest end of your arms and legs. So this is my arm. I'm going to get the narrow end of the um, arm and just pulling it apart so I'm only cutting one side. I'm actually going to make a little bit of a turning gap. Just a small slit just on one side. And then oh, I actually find it easiest to get a pencil on the other end, opposite end, and kind of just push it in um, using your fingers to separate the fabric and just take it through until you find your little cut end and just pull it straight through there. And then you're just gonna finger press all those seams out so that they're sitting nicely. Like so. Now, one thing to remember when you're doing your turning slit is when you stitch it on, you're gonna want this bit here so it's not seen. So work out how it's gonna be sitting on the doll's fabric, on the doll's body. And this one's gonna go on this side. So I actually want the slit to go on this outer edge here. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're sticking it all on. You'll probably notice it more with the legs than the arms. I might make that a little tiny bit bigger. So again, I'm just kind of opening the opposite end a little bit, pulling that fabric apart, sitting my pencil on top and using my fingers to kind of push the fabric around it. And it just kind of all slides onto the pencil and then you can push it out through our little side here. And pull this other end out. Sorry, waving the pencil at you. I'll get better at this, I promise. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So we're going to have both of our arms there and they're both facing the right way. They've both got the slits on the inside. So they are ready to stuff. And then there we go, we've got one leg. All right, and so we just want to make sure the slit is on the opposite side on this one. And then we can turn it through. You'll find your own easy way for turning um, what works for you. Um, I just, I find the pencil it's here in front of me. I've already used it and it seems to seems to work well for me. So, oh gosh, it's hard to do this when you're looking through a camera. <laughs> okay. So there we go. We've got our legs ready to stitch, our arms ready to stitch stitch so let's let's fill those up and we are going to sew them closed and then we can move on to the body okay so i have very firmly filled all of my arms and legs so they're very firmly filled and i've just really roughly stitched them closed all of these stitch lines are actually going to be um, hidden when the doll is sewn together so they don't need to be super neat it's just to keep the stuffing in so we've done those and we can set those aside now and we're going to work on the body and the ears. So for our body, we have done these two little funny lines down here. And what we need to do now is we are going to box the bottom of our cat. So we're gonna pinch this and line up these center seams, nest them together like so. And we are actually going to sew quarter inch seam along the bottom here and then again on the other side and that's going to leave just a little opening there for his stuffing and he's going to have a bit more of a 3d shape so let's do those two corners 
and then we'll come back and do the head. Okay, so that bottom two seams are done across the bottom here. And now inside here is all ready to be stuffed. Before we do that though, we need to close up his head. So we're gonna do the same thing to the top of his head. We're gonna open up this seam here, line this up, pinch it together, and we're going to do a quarter inch across the top here, and that's gonna give him a nice curvy head. Here we go, we've just stitched across, across the top here, and now he's got a bit of a, a nice little head shape, and we're ready to turn him the right way around. Okay, so again, to make it easier to turn, I'm actually going to pull out his head a little bit, stick my pencil on, slide the fabric over the pencil. Till we get to the bottom hole. Here we go, pull him through. go and he's ready for some stuffing let's get him nice and full we're going to fill him all the way up so he's nice and firm um, the rule of thumb is if you think you've stuffed it enough you haven't stuffed some more um, especially through the neck if you don't want to have a fluffy neck you need to make sure it's really firm so um, this is probably the most time consuming part of it so see how I can barely push that in that's how firm you want it it's the better the firmer the better and it's going to hold its shape and um yeah not not getting up with a flopping neck so just keep stuffing and it takes a really long time this is the real time consuming part of these toys that's why i'm not doing it on camera because that would bore you stupid um when i do do my stuffing i actually use um the end of a paintbrush because the bristles kind of help catch the stuffing and help push it through. So I use the end of a paintbrush to push it all the way through. Um, it's got a nice long long stick on it and long handle, I guess you call it. Yep, handle. <laughs> and then you just keep stuffing away. So um, let's get back here when we're finished doing our stuffing. Okay, so the body is stuffed. Starting to look a little bit more like a doll. I've stitched the bottom closed so that it's all all shut. All right, so in the pattern, the next thing we're gonna do is the arms and legs. Um, so we will do her ears a little bit later on. We'll keep those to the side. So for our arms and legs, we'll just kind of position them where we want them to go, keeping our messy seams on the inside and we can just pin those into place. Make sure you don't pin yourself on the other side of the doll. Put the pins in on an angle. Don't go straight through your finger. <laughs> All right, so we want to kind of line them up and then we're going to just stitch them on. So one thing I like using, and you don't have to um, use these, you can use a shorter needle, but I have got some longer doll needles. Um, doll needles are quite thick but that's okay because I usually double the thread over when I'm stitching arms and legs on. And um, by doing it that way, so when you've got a larger needle, you can actually sew straight through the doll. So take your needle from one arm straight through to the other arm and pull your thread 
all the way through which is a little bit easier if you don't have those though that's fine you would just work one arm at a time and you would just attach one arm at a time um, either by stitching around it or if you want it to move you just want to anchor in the center um, as best you can anchoring in the center and that will give your arm the ability to move around a little bit so I'm going to do the arms and we'll come back before we do the legs Okay, so the arms are attached and now I'm going to do the same sort of thing to the legs. So if you didn't have a doll's needle and you were just using a regular size needle, you would do the same sort of thing but you would just do one side at a time. So you would be poking it through, picking up a piece of the doll and picking up a piece of the leg and pulling it through and then going back the other way picking up a piece of the doll picking up a piece of the leg and pulling it through it is quicker with a doll needle um, and you can just get them from spotlight um, but if you don't have one and you want to make one this weekend you can still do, do it with these I probably made my first few dolls just using these needles so it is possible it's just a lot quicker with the um, the doll making needles. Okay, so there we go. We've got the body. We now are ready to stitch on the ears. So for the ears, we are just going to turn the ears around the right way. Might use our trusty pencil to poke out the tip of the ear. Okay, now completely up to you. You can add a little bit of stuffing inside your ear just to give it a little bit of fluffiness. So we're just gonna fold in the seam allowance there. So you'd see on your pattern piece it's got this little extra bit here. That's your seam allowance that you're folding in. So you're just gonna fold that in, side the ear, add a little bit of stuffing if you want, and you're gonna position that on top of your cat. Once you've got some stuffing in, I'm gonna put stuffing in mine. You don't have to. You can leave it with just some floppy ears, and then that's where they're gonna go. You can really change the character of your cat by where you position your ears. I know in the pattern um, they've got them positioned more on the side than I do. I kind of like them on top of their head. I don't know why, that's just what I like. So you just have a play around and see where you think you might like your ears to go and um, pin them into place and then you're just going to hand stitch them on as well. So I am going to put the tiniest little bit of stuffing in my ears. I, um, I think it just needs just a tiny little bit. So let's get this one. We're just going to put a tiny, tiny little bit in there. And I think I'm going to give mine a bit of a curved ear. So what I'll do oh, is tie a knot in my thread first. And I'm going to Make sure that my knot is going to be hidden by just tucking, tucking it inside the ear. And I might even 
give the center of the ear a bit of a stitch because I'm gonna gonna pucker my ear a little bit so this is kind of where your personality of your of your cat is going to start coming through because every cat that you make is going to look different and you just want to kind of get a bit of fabric from the cat and a little bit of fab fabric from the ear and just take your time and stitch around I really hope you can see this because it's really hard <laughs> to do this on camera. Okay, so both of our ears are now attached. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to give our little kitty, oh, she's got some fluff. We're gonna give her a face. So to do that, you are just going to use some embroidery floss and we are going to just stitch on her nose. So if we have a look at this one here, it's just literally just from one side to another, um, stitching it on. Now, because embroidery floss is just that little bit thicker you might find it easier to split the strands so you would cut off a length of floss and because it is six strands you can split it to three two whatever you're more comfortable with it'll just depend on your needle size too and what's easy to thread but that's what you're going to stitch the nose on with and then for the eyes i just use a fabric paint like this one here and and I actually just use a dressmaker's pin like this one here. It is very small. It's got a very tiny sort of flat edge to it. And I stick the eyes on with that. Now, if you're worried about where to position the eyes, one good idea is just to get some pins and just audition. Audition where you want your eyes to be. So you might want them very close to the nose oh yeah i think that's what i'll do nice and close to the nose this gives you a bit of an idea of where you want the eyes to be and a little bit less scary when you're painting them on as you take them away you might give it a bit of a wiggle and it'll give you a, a bit of a, a marker where the pin has been and then for painting the eyes on, I literally just, try not to get paint anywhere else, I open my paint and I just dab, oh, I can't see where it is. <laughs> and I just dab the end of the um, pin in the paint. Um, you can do a test one on a bit of scrap fabric if you wanted to, just to make sure that you've got the right amount of paint on and then just practice. But that's how you get the eyes on. So I'm going to do the eyes and I'm going to do the nose and then we'll get back together. Okay, so I have decided on the position of the eyes. I think from all angles, that looks pretty cute. <music>
So now that our cat has a little face, she needs some clothes. So let's put her aside. We're gonna get out our fabric that we're gonna use for the dress. So I have got a fat eighth here, which is just enough, just. So what you're going to need to do, firstly, is you want a strip of fabric. Um, how big did they say? All right, so you're not just going to need to cut out the pattern pieces, you are also going to need to get a strip of fabric, which will be the frill. And it says here it wants it to be two inches by 19 and a quarter inches. So I'm just gonna cut off my two inch strip from the side and set that aside because I will need that later. So I've got my two inch strip and then with the remainder fabric, um, keeping it doubled over because we need two, I'm going to cut out two of the dress and two of the sleeves. All right, so these need a bit of a press, so I'm gonna go and do that. And while I'm there, and while you're there, you're going to need to just iron a crease or a fold in your sleeve pattern. So if you were to just get the extra seam allowance there as a bit of a guide for how much, um, so it's a quarter of an inch, and we're going to iron that on both pieces. Okay, so I've given them a press and I have folded down the uh, bottoms of each of the sleeves. Now in the pattern, it doesn't tell you to do this, but I um, am gonna do it with mine and I'm just gonna put um, a stitch across both of the cuffs. I didn't do this on my first doll and I wish I had, so I'm just going to put it in there as a suggestion. Just remember to increase your stitch length again because it'll still be sitting on a very low stitch length and you can do this at a two and a half and um, yeah, just do a straight stitch across there. Okay, so I've just given that a bit of a stitch. I haven't finished off any of the edges because this is not gonna go on the washing machine and that would just add bulk to each of your seams. So just by uh, turning up those edges of the sleeves, that's perfect. What you're going to need to do now is you are going to sew the sleeves right sides together just to the edge of the pattern here. So quarter of an inch down here, and then you will do the same with the other side, making sure that the cuff part is facing down, and you're going to sew that just to that side. So let's do that step next. So what you'll have will look a bit like this. It does look a bit strange, but trust me, this is what it's supposed to look like. All right, so the next step is to do the same with the other short ends onto the other side of the dress pattern. So these edges here will line up, quarter of an inch, and then do the same for this side. And that will be a quarter of an inch down there as well. So let's do that bit. So what you should have now should look like this. Um, it looks a bit odd, but when you lay it down flat, like so, it's starting to look like a dress. Okay, so now that you've got it to this point, you're gonna sew from the armpits all the way down. So from the armpits all the way down, quarter of an inch seam, just down these side bits here. Okay, now that those sides are sewn, we are going to go to our ironing board and we're gonna press this top edge of the dress down a quarter of an inch the whole way around the uh, neck hole. So when you've done that, it should look something like this. So the top is all turned over and pressed down like so. Okay, so I'm filming this little section of the tutorial after I've already finished making the doll because I've got a missing piece of video and I don't know what has happened. Um, obviously, I've thought I pressed record and didn't press record. So there's a section that's missing. Um, so what you're going to do from where we're up to is you're going to turn your dress the right side out and just put it to the side. And then you're going to take your piece for the ruffle Mine is a different color because I'm doing this with just a piece of fabric because I've actually already finished making the doll. So with your ruffle, you are going to just iron 
up a quarter of an inch seam all the way along and then we're going to stitch it down just like we did with our cuffs so what you will have will look a bit like this and then you are going to turn that into a, a circle and you're just going to sew a quarter of an inch down this side here and then that will take you back to <laughs> the regular tutorial all right so we've formed ourselves a circle for the next step you're going to need a needle and thread because we are going to gather up our frill so i've got my thread doubled over it's not really necessary to do that it just um, gives you a bit more security when you're pulling on them to gather your skirt up into a frill and you just want to kind of pleat your fabric onto your needle and pull it through and you're going to do this the whole way around the outside just try to keep your pleats reasonably even it's not a big deal if they're not perfect but just thread thread it all onto your needle Okay, so I have got all of my thread onto my skirt ruffle. What I'm going to do now is get this. We're going to slide this inside and we're going to kind of pull our thread bit by bit and spread the ruffles out until they kind of match up with this part of the dress. So. You're going to have to do quite a bit of pulling and then you can kind of move your ruffles around a little bit so that they're a bit more even. So take your time, get it so it's a nice fit. And then once you've got it as a nice fit, you're going to pin it to the bottom side of your dress. Okay, so when you're sort of happy that your ruffles are fairly evenly spaced, um, again, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect. What you're going to do then is take this over to your machine and you are going to do a straight stitch all the way around and that's going to hold all of your ruffles into place. So a straight stitch all the way around the edge, quarter of an inch seam, and that will just hold all those ruffles where you want them to be. So I'll go do that and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so our ruffle is all sewn on and our dress is looking very much like a dress. So for the next part, we actually need to dress our cat. So we're gonna slide the legs in from the top because that is actually the easiest. Um, hands go in. And slide it all the way up. Ready for the next step. Okay, so now that we've got the dress on, we are going to thread our needle. Um, just with a single thread this time's fine. We're gonna start at the back with our knot at the back. And just like we did for the skirt, we are gonna ruffle this top edge, making sure that we go through um, the folded over seam going through both bits of fabric and we're going to go all the way around the top edge. Okay, when 
you get back to the start, don't cross over your stitches. What you're gonna do is very gently pull the thread until your neckline is all gathered on your dress. So once you've got your neckline where you want it to be, you're gonna use the tail here to just put in a few stitches to secure the dress. And then you can knot that off. And her little dress is done. Very, very cute dress. Okay, now that we have our little kitty cat, she needs to get her satchel to put her treasures in. So let's get our pattern piece for the satchel next. Okay, from our bag fabric, we need to cut a strip that is one and a half by 12 and a half inches. And then to make the handle, we are going to iron that in half. Now using that ironing mark as a guide, you are going to then fold and press your raw edges to that middle middle line. So you're gonna fold those raw edges into the center and then you're gonna fold it again and press it again. And this is your bag handle. So take this to the machine and just do a straight stitch down the edge to seal it shut. And then once you have sewn that along the edge, we can put that aside and work out and work on the satchel. And for the bag, we're going to need to get our bag piece. Um, we are going to fold our fabric in half and we're gonna trace around that bag piece, marking the opening here. Okay, so let's take this to the machine. We are gonna sew on our line, directly on our line, but stopping and starting at the opening here. Once you've sewn around, we are going to cut a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Just clip in the seams on the curves, just a few clips on each one. And then we can pull it through. We might do our pencil trick for this. pull it all through, pull those edges out and just give it a quick press. Okay, now that we've done that, we just need to sew this opening closed. You can just do a machine, machine stitch for this because it's gonna be on the inside of the bag and you're not gonna see it. So there we go, I've just mach machine stitched that closed. What you're gonna do now is kind of pull your bag apart and you're going to put the opening side on the inside of here and just kind of push it all the way to the bottom. And that gives you a bit of a lined satchel. So once you've got it all sitting inside, you can go to your sewing machine and just do a top stitch the whole way around. And that will just keep the inside of the bag on the inside. And now that that's got a little bit of top stitching, the final thing to do is just to attach the handles. And you are just going to machine stitch them to the either side of your bag. And then you have it, our little kitty cat with her satchel. She's just so cute. I hope you enjoyed this Tilda Cat Sew Along. And if you did and would like to see more Tilda Sew Alongs, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you do make a cat, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what everyone's making. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again next time. Bye everybody.